Hi, this is Tarek Sami and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 148 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case with multiple unexpected occurrences. This is actually the continuation of case 147 for the Manual of PCI. And to remind everyone, this patient presented with non steel elevation of myocardial infarction about six months before and was found to have significant disease in a heavily calcified and tortuous LAD as well as a severe lesion in the distal RCA. An attempt was done to cross the LAD with a guide wire complicated by acute, by acute vessel closure. The patient tolerated this procedure well. MRI was done showing a half 50% uh, transmural refraction on the LAD territory with viability in the other territories. He came back a few months later and underwent successful PCI of the LED using crossing with a microcatheter and the CM black as well as rotational atherectomy. This is case 147. He now came back for staged PCI of the right coronary artery and this was the first unexpected find during the case. This was a significant lesion before but now it is a complete occlusion. We do not know exactly how old it is but we know it is definitely younger than six months which was the previous angiogram of the RCA showing patency with a severe lesion. Given the relatively recent age, we decided to try to cross it under grade, so we used a fine cross and a filter XK, and very easily we crossed into the distal true lumen. We should have put a second guide catheter for confirmation, but actually the wire went very easily. After pedilatation, there was some undergrade flow. We used a Sasuki dual microcatheter to wire into the right posterior lateral. We always want to preserve the bifurcation in significant branches, and the posterior lateral here was considered to be significant. So using the CM black, we were able to wire this uh, branch. We had difficulty with delivery. We did use uh, a telescope kite extension. This is radial axis with relatively poor support. And then uh, that causes the problem of difficulty with equipment compatibility. We took the guide extension out and then deep seated uh, the ICARI guide. And then by doing that, we were able to balloon, uh, perform balloon angioplasty as well as kissing balloon angioplasty of the PDA and the posterior lateral. We then decided to place a stand. This is a 2.75 by 38 that went in well. However, this is what we saw after the stand was being positioned, which is staining distally. This is a distal vessel perforation. This was a workhorse wire that had a loop at the tip. And although workhorse wires are safer than polymer jacketed wires, they are 100% safe. Also, although we think that the knuckles or loops at the tip of the wire are safer than having the wire being straight, that's clearly not the case, as we can see here. Possibly the reason you have a relatively large perforation is because the entire loop went out versus just the tip of the wire. So what to do? Like every other perforation, the first step is to inflate a balloon to occlude the vessel, and then call the surgeons, pericytosynthesis, vasopressors, get the second axis if needed, and then for distal vessel perforations, embolization with fatal coils is the usual best treatment. Echo did not show any significant infusion. The patient was hemodynamically stable. So we went ahead to treat it with coiling. How to do coil to minimize bleeding into the pericardium? With the so-called block and deliver technique, we delivered a balloon and then uh, delivered a microcatheter. The balloon was then inflated, blocking blood flow to the distal RCA and to the right posterior lateral. We actually were greedy. We tried to use the same balloon, both for occluding flow into the vessel and trapping to insert the microcatheter, but this did not work very well. So we ended up doing it the right way. Again, deep seated guy catheter. And now what we have here is the balloon over one wire and the microcatheter into the perforated vessel. Injection shows that we do have still extravasation into the pericardium. How to treat this? The simplest thing is with coils. Those can be delivered through standard 0.014 inch microcatheters if we have uh, such uh, coils like the Axiom from Metronic. The two, two millimeter by three centimeter coil was delivered and this is a detachable coil which means that we can uh, deliver it, confirm the position is excellent before actually releasing it using the special release device. So we did, but then injection through the fine cross so that we still have some extravasation through the coil we just placed. 
And this is not uncommon. Quite often it takes a few minutes of time for the uh, perforation to seal. So we did wait, but unfortunately there remained extravasation. Therefore, we decided to do something more. One option would be to put another coil. The other option is to use fat, and that's exactly what we did. We harvested fat from the right groin, and then we injected it, and this uh, caused successful hemostasis. This is actually something we've um, published recently, and this is actually also case 124 from the Manual of PCI, in which uh, the coil embolization is combined with fat to achieve hemostasis. After the perforation was sealed, we reinserted the wire into the PDA and angiography showed significant disease. Therefore, we decided to treat the PDA. We did place a 2.0 millimeter stand. But then what happened is uh, um, we did have a compromised flow after the stand was delivered into the right posterior lateral. So well, how to deal with this? One is to use the reverse car technique, reverse crush technique, or use the tap technique. We decided to use the reverse crush technique, so rewired in the posterior lateral, dilated the side branch. But then we lost everything during attempts to deliver. The radial axis was really giving us a very hard time throughout the case. We finally switched femoral. This is now femoral 7 frame cell 1. Much, much better support, which facilitated everything. We do see the slow flow on the posterior lateral with successful sealing of the perforation with the coil. So we rewired both vessels. We placed a 2.0 millimeter stand into the posterior lateral, slightly protruding into the main vessel, distal RCA. Then uh, the stand was deployed. The stand balloon was removed. We have a nice result. The stand was crushed. We rewired into the right posterior lateral and did the kissing balloon inflation and the proximal optimization, followed then by another 48 millimeter stand in the proximal mid RCA intravascular ultrasound for stand optimization, showing good stand expansion and strata position, post dilatation with a 3.0 millimeter NC balloon, and a nice final result with good flow in both the PDA as well as the posterior lateral. Multiple lessons from this case. We did have uh, three things that were unexpected. The first one is that the lesion was occlusive. It wasn't before. The second was a distal vessel perforation, even though we had a workhorse wired with a loop. And the third one is significant side branch compromise, which is not, did not expect, but we successfully took care of, of it using the reversed uh, crash technique. Lessons are to always be prepared for the unexpected because it's not infrequent during coronary angiography and PCI. When it comes to Distal vessel perforation, prevention is key, so monitoring the position of the wire could have prevented that perforation. Even with a workhorse wire, things are not safe, even when we have a loop. And actually, if the loop goes out, the perforation it causes might be larger than if the wire tip was straight. For distal vessel perforation, usually treatment is with embolization, with coil or fat, but sometimes, as in this case, one may have to use both coil and fat to achieve hemostasis. Thank you.